give us a drive to 13 Mitigator Ford Fusion. I'd like to thank you for listening to Let's Talk Racing.tv. Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. <laughs>
trying to bring it up on this well, side. Well, keep trying to bring it up. <laughs> well, Robert, for anybody who's also new to the show and listening in, give a profile so they know about you, what all you've done in racing. <laughs> well, uh, as I've said before, uh, uh, my name is Robert Richardson, Jr. <laughs> I drive the number 23 car in the NASCAR Nationwide Series. And uh, I'm typically on this show on a weekly basis. That's right. Yeah. Just, just a near about. All these. <laughs> Probably, mostly, yeah. We're going to make you famous. That's We're, all there is to it. Yeah, Robert. we make people famous, so be happy. <laughs> well, uh, we will definitely keep you entertained, to say the least, <laughs> every week. And, and listening to the fine folks here on Let's Talk Radio. And, uh, Roger? Yeah? Questions you have for me this evening, brother? Say what? You got any questions for me that you want answered about racing, or? Well, uh, now, Menards, now, Menards. What, what do you do? You hear about uh, the Menards card? I have not. Oh, oh inform them on that. <laughs> See, y'all, y'all got you know, you know, fresher news right off the presses than what I've heard. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know. Well, let's inform them, shall we? Anyway, they got snagged for doing a modification on the frame. Mm-mm-mm. There were there were fines, there were uh, Suspen- points, suspensions, all that good stuff. All that stuff, yeah. some junk. <laughs> no cheating in racing, Robert. Yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> anyway, you know they'll slap your hand if they catch you, but you know in that case it sounds pretty serious. So. That's right. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. I remember uh, talking to Carl Long right after they they hit him on that engine thing, and he never even had raced it on the track. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so Robert. Yes. You guys are headed to Bristol tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. When do you uh, when do you qualify? Uh, so it's a one day show for the Nationwide Series at Bristol this weekend. It's uh, everything will happen all day Friday. Uh, anything in between uh, practice, qualifying, and, and the race will be Friday night uh, there at Bristol. So definitely looking forward to going back to Bristol. It's been a while since I've been there, but. Uh, you know, definitely excited about the, the new resurfacing job that they've done. Uh, supposedly, it's supposed to be like the old Bristol. And, uh, you know, I, I ran really well there uh, in the truck series back when it used to be uh, the old track. So, uh, definitely looking forward to going back to the track and uh, hopefully surviving, um, you know, all the wrecks and the mayhem that, you know, ensues, you know, there at Bristol. But, um, you know, definitely you know, pre pumped up the next, well, about the next couple of weeks. You know, we have. Uh, Bristol this weekend, Atlanta the following week, and, and then Richmond, uh, you know, in your, in your guys' backyard, matter of fact. Right, yeah. Right. <clears throat> so definitely, you know, pretty stoked about, uh, you know, those three racetracks. We typically run really well there. And, uh, you know, just excited to get back to racing. Yeah. Speaking of tracks, what would you say is your favorite track to race on? My very favorite. Your very favorite track. <laughs> Everybody says Texas. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, me personally, uh, you know, yeah, Texas Motor Speedway is, is my home track, and you know, I've had a lot. One point for Roger. He guessed right. He knew that you were going to say Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you heard it, but he says, "I bet you he says Texas." Oh, no, surprisingly, I'm going to say Talladega. Okay. Oh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. See, now that you told him that, now he's going to choose a different one. Well, right? he's a tie. He likes both just the same, right? Yeah. <laughs> he, likes the, he likes the big tracks. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what would you say is your least favorite track you've raced on? My least favorite? Yeah, your least favorite. One that you're like, oh, God, i got to race here. Why? <laughs> well, I mean, any racetrack that we go to and get to race on is, is a lot of fun. I mean, every driver has... You know, difficulties with you know, various racetracks, you know, depending on their driving style. But um, you know, I would probably say you know, New Hampshire is, is a track that I've struggled with in the past, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, a track like Dover, yeah, you know, it you really got to be spot on with your setup and you know, have your suspension right when you go to a place like that to really uh, be fast there. And those are two tracks that I've, I've struggled at in the past. So. Um, you know, not saying that I won't ever enjoy racing there because <laughs> it's a really good race car. It makes life a lot easier on you. But, yeah. uh, you know, for the past couple of you know years that I've raced there, for, the, for some reason we just haven't really hit on, the, you know, on anything when we go to those two places. Yeah. Do you do any other types of racing or have you done other types of racing? 
Uh, yes, I've, I've run, you know, licensed cars when I first started my career, uh, you know, back in, I guess, 2002 was when I got started. Uh, I raced Legends cars at Texas Motor Speedway. Uh, they have a little program where you can, you know, race the dirt track, the, the road track, uh, the road courses inside the speedway there, uh, the trioval track, and they also have, uh, you know, a fifth mile uh, short track outside of the speedway there at, you know, strictly just for, you know, legends and, and bandoleros and cars like that. So, um, get a, you know, good diverse bit of, of different types of racing there. And it's a, you know, good way for a lot of you know, young up and coming drivers to get their feet wet in, mm -hmm. in racing. And, you know, it's a lot more affordable way of racing as well for, you know, people who are just wanting to get into it. Yeah. Who do you? Who would you say inspired you to get you to start racing? Like, who really got you into it? And you're like, I really want to do that one day. Anybody in your family? Or oh, no, not not really. I mean, I, I played football you know, most of my life, and you know, you know, playing quarterback in, in middle school, high school, college, and Welcome. had a, a competitive edge, and uh, and wanted to compete, and, and, and something that would be a lot of fun. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I was done playing football. I wanted to get involved in something that had a similar feel, mm -hmm. and I uh, thought auto racing would be a good you know, niche to get into. Mm -hmm. um, you have the, the teamwork aspect, obviously, that goes into it with your crew members and, and uh, you know, things like that. And, you know, obviously the racing part of it, being competitive, competing with, you know, 43 of you know, America's you know, greatest you know, drivers on a weekly basis, it's, it's an honor to be racing in NASCAR and, and you know, to be running uh, the amount of races that I've been running in the Nationwide <laughs> Series this year. You know, I'd, I'd love to run a full season at some point, but, <laughs> right. Right. but the economy the way it is and you know, a lot of teams are struggling trying to find sponsorship and, and, and creating partnerships with various companies right now because everybody's kind of <clears throat> holding on what they got and you know, a lot of companies are, are limited to what you know, amount of money that they can spend on advertising budgets and, and things like that. So, uh, you know, a lot, everybody's kind of in a holding pattern right now, just kind of waiting on the economy to take yeah. a turn for the better. The economy's really took an effect on racing. I was in Knoxville. The guy, her crew chief, um, Tom, was telling me about how the stands used to be packed and you had to sit wherever your seat was, wherever you told your seat was, and now you can kind of, like, really sit yeah. anywhere. <clears throat> yeah, the Knoxville the, uh, the Nationals, they were down a third. Than what a they third, normally are, gosh. Yeah. So I mean, there were still there were still you know forty thousand people there. Yeah, it's still a lot. But <clears throat> it used to be a jam yeah. pack, and yeah. it really goes to show how that's all it is. affected racing and the racing world, the drivers and the fans both. Right. And it's the competitors shame. are really struggling. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so expensive. Yeah, it's gone to where it's really expensive. <clears throat> now, does anybody else in your family do racing? Are you kind of a lone wolf there? Just only one racing. Pretty much a lone wolf, but my, <laughs> my family is, is definitely a bunch of adrenaline junkies. <laughs> you know, my is a professional bull rider, so he rides in the Oh, wow. Wow. I'm interested in that. I watch <laughs> bull riding. Uh, yeah, my, my dad got that whole deal started. Yeah. First one in the family to start riding bulls and then passed it on to his brother and then therefore passed it on to my cousin. So, um, And you're the oddball outside of choose racing. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's got you know most of his teeth, I guess. That's, right. Uh, you know, broken a bunch of bones. As most of those guys do, but mm -hmm. um, you know, adrenaline definitely runs in our family. Oh yeah, I can tell. Bull riding, that's a crazy sport. And you get injured a lot, but if you want an adrenaline rush, that that be your thing that you've been wanting to do. And racing can also be an adrenaline rush as well. So. Uh, I'd say your family's pretty much full of that, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get on a bull one of these days, but oh, I'm going to wait until my racing career is finished before I do that because I know more than likely I'll end up breaking something. So <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to try it out, though. We'll get you uh, We'll get you in that sprint car before the next season get, gets over with, too. So that's kind of right, like riding a bull, too. Yeah, so, really. That'll be fun to do. Mm -hmm. So, Robert. Yes. What do you think about Bristol? What's what's your score going to be? How are you going to do? I don't know. I mean, it, you know, Bristol's about like going to a super speedway race. I mean, right. if a wreck happens in front of you, you know, you know, the closing rate of speed at that place is, you know, you blink your eyes and you're already on top of the wreck, you know, <laughs> even before you know it even happens. That's so, true. Mm -hmm. 
your spot you got to really rely on your spotters uh, that are up on the roof and, and telling you what to do and where to go and what's going on around the racetrack so you can kind of anticipate you know what's about to happen before it even happens so um, you know but it's, it's definitely a wild card race and uh, if you make it you know across the finish line at the end of the race you definitely have a successful night that's right you oh, yeah. sheet mill is kind of a normal thing there for sure mm-hmm yeah, but we're we're definitely aiming for you know top fifteen, top twenty is you know a realistic goal that you know we set our team with you know standards on. So hopefully uh, we'll come away with a decent finish and carry that momentum into Atlanta next week. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure you put a lot of extra pad in between that uh, the, the fenders and everything else for as much stuff that goes on out there. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this year's definitely been rough on us, and we've had a, you know pretty long <clears throat> bad luck. Uh, you know, this year in between mechanical failures and you know, engine failures, and uh, <laughs> right. you know, get, getting caught up in the wrecks at the super speedways, but you know, that's part of racing, and, and that's what keeps you coming back because you know that you can do better uh, as a team. And you know, me as a driver, I know we're capable of finishing better and doing ten times better than what we've shown, and right. uh, you know, right. we're out to, to prove that this weekend and, and in the pursuing week. Cool beans. Right. Well, one of the watchers said to let you know that uh, at Texas last year, Kyle Petty did uh, one of the bull rides. <laughs> if that's what you want to call it. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, oh, my gosh. Man, that's I love good. That. I'm glad we got that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they're wanting to, you know, go ride a milk cow for... <laughs> down the gauntlet for Kyle, see if he can step up and do a real bull next time. Oh, so we'll right. That's right. Man. Show me what you got, Kyle, for sure. Yeah, I bet <laughs> you a rodeo live bull ride, and that stuff is that's pretty crazy. And of course, I've ride a mechanical bull, you know, for the fun of it, and I can barely hang on to that thing. God knows what it's like riding a real one. <laughs> <laughs> and again, there ain't much to me, so I'd fall off one little fling of the thing. <laughs> Well, I mean, you see how small a lot of those guys are, though. Oh, yeah. They are small. They are, but I give them credit for what they do. It's it's a pretty tough sport. I mean, the smaller you are, the less that's being thrown around. I so know. That's right. Physics dictate you should easily win. Yeah, but I, look at me. I'm a freaking stick, Raj. <laughs> oh, now, talking about racing oh, and all this. 1.6 seconds, by the way, is all he lasted. Who no, got, really? Kyle? Yeah. Right. Wow. Okay, what? apparently, according to... He lasted 1.6 seconds. I can't read the name who posted that. That's Jim Boyle. Jim Boyle said he lasted 1.6 seconds. He's he's commenting on all this, watching the show right now. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah, we've already got somebody that said, oh, we got two very cute gals on the show. Boy, I miss this a lot. He used to be one of the guys on the show. He said, there's been major improvements since him and Matt were here. <laughs> I like that. That's good. I know. I told him why. Thank you. you. (laughs) Anything's better than Matt. We all know that. Oh, my gosh. No, we love you, Matt. We love you, baby. I do. Mean it. Mean it. (laughs) Oh, boy. Now, since we're talking about this and the bull riding and that coming up, Mm -hmm. what would you say would be your favorite and most embarrassing moment throughout racing? Favorite first. Favorite first. That's your favorite. Let's get the nice one done. <laughs> well, I guess one, I guess, I can't really say I've had many embarrassing moments, but, um... Everybody says that. Well, there's those pictures I put on YouTube, <clears throat> but never mind. No, Roger, me. <laughs> right. yeah, unlike Kyle Petty. I mean, Sorry. Besides, you know, crashing cars, I mean, that's embarrassing in itself. Yeah. If you have a an opportunity to, to miss something or, you know, avoid a wreck, but you mm-hmm. get caught up in it. I mean, yeah, that's, you know, embarrassing in some cases. Um, you know, but I'd probably say, I, I wouldn't say I was embarrassed. You know, I was signing a bunch of autographs at Daytona one year. Uh, and he forgot his name. People around me, all of a sudden, they all just left me like I had the plague, you know. And I'm like, <laughs> and I turn around. And, you know, Dale Jr. is walking out of the garage and walking to, you know. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you know, that, that, I would love you know, But, you know, oh. well, I mean, hell, I'd probably run and go get Dale Jr.'s autograph, too. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you know. 
I have, I have to tell you some of my Dale Senior stories sometimes, Robert. Oh, yeah. He told me one about when he was trying to get something signed by him. Oh, you'll have to say that one. That was funny. Yeah. He was telling me a lot of stories on the way up when we were driving to Knoxville about racing and who always met and trying to get autographs. That's Knoxville, like that. Iowa, not Tennessee. Yeah, Iowa. Not Tennessee. Knoxville, Iowa. So now we've gotten your most embarrassing moment out of the way. What'd you say be your favorite moment in racing? My favorite? Yeah, I know. It's hard to pick, right? <laughs> I got a bunch of favorites. Uh, one was uh, winning my very first race in a super late model at Texas Motor Speedway mm -hmm. uh, on the big track. And it was, you know, NASCAR weekend, you know, had a lot of, you know, hype, you know, coming into that weekend. And we ended up winning the race out there. So that was, a, you know, my, I guess, first big milestone. Um, then, you know, second one, uh, you know, probably, you know, my first cup race mm -hmm. that I ran at Talladega, uh, with Tommy Baldwin, uh, and his program in the 36 car, we finished 18th oh, wow. at Talladega. And then, uh, that's one of the reasons why it's my favorite racetrack. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, right. and my last one would probably, you know, making my very first Daytona 500 a couple of years ago. That, that was late. <clears> really, yeah, that's amazing. Special, special yeah. moment, too. Yeah. Now, since we're picking on some other racers here, I'm going to pick a bone with you. Who would you say is the easiest and hardest racer to drive against? Uh, <laughs> yes. But, I mean, I, I can't say any of them are really easy. I mean, everybody's real competitive, and mm -hmm. I mean, any given weekend, you know, somebody can have a malfunction with their car and, and make it easy to race against them, but... Well, say for instance you were at Daytona and you made a deal with somebody, who do you think would be the the best one that you would would honor it to to run with? If, yeah, well, if you had to team up, you know, for running a two car tandem. Yeah, I mean, hell, any of the Cup teams, any of those guys, you know, you know are going to be fast. Um, That's almost a trick question. Yeah, it's a trick question because I'm saying. Because, you know, like, who was it? I forget who it was, but they were saying they were pushing somebody really good, and then all of a sudden team orders popped up, and they just let them go by the wayside and went to their teammate, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you try to create teammates and, and people to run with at tracks like that, but uh, sometimes you just can't help but either lose the draft with that guy or, you know, they jump to a different lane and, you know, try to run with them. But uh, hands down, the, the toughest, uh, you know, competitor that we – Last oh. series has been Kyle Busch. I mean, right, yeah. right. On a regular basis. And yeah, right. He hasn't had the success that he normally has had, um, you know, this year with his, his own program. You know, but you know yeah. that it's just a matter of time before he wins a race. Sure, uh, yeah. sure. They're, they're all the, you know, <clears throat> the puzzle together and. And running pretty solid on a weekly basis, so I would say uh, you know, he's probably you know that guy that everybody guns for on a, every week. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. and it, it is a really competitive sport, you know. Everybody's trying to get a spot ahead. Everybody's trying to get, you know, trying their best to win and right. get in a decent spot. And right. It's it's pretty tough sport. Like I watch it, I'm always at the end, edge of my seat, you know, seeing what's going to happen. Is going to be a wreck or anyone's going to get ahead if you know it's it's a real tough sport it's tough we it love is. it though yeah we love it you gotta love you gotta love racing well yeah. not wrecking. no not wrecking yeah as my mom's commenting in the background and you don't like the wrecking that much even though like roger does say the sad truth might get more viewers but we'd like not to see that right so robert you guys are cutting out in the morning going to head up to bristol tomorrow Yes, ma'am. We're uh, we're leaving the, you know R three Motorsports at eight thirty on the dot. And we're uh, hook them up to Bristol, and uh, you know I think there's tech day tomorrow, so we'll go through technical inspection, and uh, right. I think with the nationwide and the Cup Series cars, and then uh, you know Friday will be the one day show for the nationwide series. So hopefully we have a good weekend, and uh, you know definitely looking forward. You know, for the next couple of weeks, for sure. And yeah. I hope all of you guys get to come up to the Richmond race as well. Oh, Absolutely. yeah, we're, we're trying to get Absolutely. to the Richmond races, and I really want to go. That'll be my first Richmond race. A lot of people in my family have been, but now I'm finally old enough to be able to 
go to one. That's right. So, so you're a uh, you're gonna be a, a Richmond rookie, huh? Yeah, That's right. it'll be our That's first time, be. and I'd be so excited well, to go to a Richmond yeah. race finally. Well, okay, so I might have to get you a pit pass, and then you know put a rookie strap on you. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Little, little yellow duct tape on her uh, blue jeans. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll, if that gets me in pits, fine. I'll ha I'll have a little s s strand that says rookie, you know. Everybody's got to pick on the newbie a little bit. And I actually have duct tape with me that I'll probably just bring. Yeah. Get me my favorite color, <laughs> my favorite duct tape in a neon color, my favorite color. So. It has to be yellow. It has, it has to, to be yellow. yellow. Oh, I was going for yellow. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. I ain't doing that. You're funny. My father's now making jokes. Anyways. <laughs> what what, what, what ended? Huh? Duct tape for all of a sudden. Because he's saying it'll take a yellow stripe of duct tape. <laughs> I walked around the corner, we're talking racing, now we're talking duct tape. Jeez. Hey, duct tape's used in racing a lot, so it's not like we're really off but topic. But that's usually in bad times. I didn't know we were talking bad things already. We're not talking bad things. Well, talking about how granted, maybe... Granted, he's going to Bristol. He's going to probably need a lot. Yeah, you're going to need... So stock up on duct tape. Uh, yeah, you're going to... Me there, because Bristol's crazy. I love watching it. Gosh, the wrecks. Would you turn? Yeah. You can't turn your phone down. Besides him, uh, exiting in and out right. about the duct tape and all, totally. all of that. Totally. Um, speaking of wrecks and all, what would you say was the biggest wreck you were in, and how'd you handle it? Well, it's kind of out of your control, so there's really no handling <laughs> going on oh, no. whenever you're wrecking. But um, I don't know. I've been in quite a few. <laughs> uh, I caught on fire at Charlotte this year oh, uh, gosh. after hitting the wall uh, in the nationwide race, and you know, so that was the first time I've ever caught on fire. That's not good. And they didn't give any hot dogs or marshmallows, did they? <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. So. Now that you're here, Roger, what he was saying is, I'm going to be a rookie <clears throat> first time for Richmond for me. He'll get me a yellow thing of duct tape to put on my jeans that says oh, okay. rookie and get me a pit pass. and. All that, and you know, everybody has to pick on the newbie a little bit, and <laughs> I, I dealt right. with that. You'll, you'll like her, Robert. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Oh, thanks, Rod. She's okay. <laughs> she's okay, Robert. She's she's gonna be okay. She's gonna fit right in. Yeah, I'll fit right in. She's <laughs> gonna be okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, if we get done with her, she may not. Yeah, she did. Oh, <laughs> hey, you, no ideas. Don't you be too mean to me while we're there. It's, I know it's I'm only. I'm never a, mean to you. Yeah, of course not. You're like a little angel from above, right? That's right. Yeah, uh huh. Anyway, besides <laughs> that, we're not gonna get into that at all. With him, no. He's family, so we're just not gonna get into that. Yeah, he's, he's completely awesome. We'll just leave it at that. There's awesome, Raj. Just awesome. Right. So off of that note. <laughs> <laughs> we got Robert to shut down real quick for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he wants to make any comments either, depending on how long he's known you. I think you. maybe Robert's looking oh, for a new girlfriend, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What was that, Robert? Do what now? You were getting ready to say something? No, I was, I'm just... Tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> as I come the interview, so. Right. Yeah, listen, our interviews always end up going out of control or spiling in the other direction. You, you know how it is on here. We always have fun one way, shape, form, or another. Mm -hmm. We always have some fun. Always, always have fun. Anybody on the, on the line there that wants to have any questions? Or? Yeah, any questions? Now, oh, they, did, did you. Now, what'd you tell them about your football career, by the way? Yeah, I guess I could, you know, yap on about that for a couple. Of yeah, I'm a big football fan as well, so yap on that a little. Well, I grew up in Texas, and everybody knows that Texas is, you know, pretty much powerhouse football, and Ugh. it's practically a, a religion, you know, in, in Texas. And you know, uh, my high school and everything was no different. Everybody it was like family, and uh, you know, you watch Friday Night Lights. So, I you know, that's exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what Texas football is like, and uh, you know, so I had to be from Texas and got to have the opportunity to play football there. But uh, went to college and played for a year at you know, Southern Methodist University in Dallas, and uh, oh, wow. it was a, a different experience. And uh, I had a good time. You know, created a lot of friendships and stuff. You know, playing football for them, and it's carried on. You know, through today. And but. Uh, for my size, you know, I was 5'10", and at the time weighed, you know, 180 pounds. Oh, gee. Play 
Division One, you know, quarterback, uh, you know, especially with SMU's offense, they were strictly uh, drop back and pass offense. You know, I wasn't, you know, that guy, and uh, just elected to, you know, trade in my, you know, football helmet and shoulder pads for a steering wheel, and you know, that's <laughs> was, uh, you know, racing and, and NASCAR and having a blast. Well, out of curiosity, who do you pull for in uh, football? I'm guessing you're a Dallas Cowboy fan since you're from around there. Yeah, well, you, you say it like you're not a Dallas Cowboy fan. I <laughs> am a proud Washington Redskins fan. Oh, my God. Yes, I'm oh, sorry, no. Terry. I had to break it to you. This, this interview is over. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Tell them you're Indian. You have to go for the Redskins. Also, I mean, that's the Virginia team. Oh, we have, well, anyways, you have a quiz, quick question from a fan, really quick. It's I'm kind of okay. interesting. Uh, he he asked, What do you do if you need to go to the restroom while racing? And just to let you know, this fan is Roger Bream. Yeah. <laughs> you know how often I get that question? <laughs> I don't. Oh. I don't know. He decided to throw this question right. randomly out of the blue. So I, I, every every race car driver, I'm sure, gets asked that on a you know a weekly basis. But uh, you know, some guys they just you know let it fly. You know, while they're <laughs> race car. But uh, you know, I'm old enough, and you know, I don't need the pins just yet. So I will do until the end of the race. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of guys, you know, they can uh, it and, you know, they just can do their business right there in the seat. There you go. Yeah, I think you, you just, so I think you grossed out my mother. She's got this horrifying <laughs> look on her face. I just, yeah. I just. You asked that because she was here, didn't you? I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> that means yes. I'm going to, I'm going to, I've got something I'm going to pick up from Walgreens for you, Robert. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There was actually on one of the shark shows you, have you ever seen those what shark show it's the one uh, shark, week. shark tank no it's shark tank is where the guys come together with all these neat ideas of what to do oh yeah to, mm -hmm. to get the investor I stuff i love that show they actually had a guy that came out there and he makes a lot of, in, of inventions and one of them was to be able to keep with you in a car alleviate yourself in case you had to do something whether you're male or female hmm well, if he got that into racing, I'm pretty sure he'd make a decent amount, I guess. But we don't have enough things distracting us while we're driving. I know. <laughs> Jeez. That's right. Lord. Yeah, right. On a racetrack. Oh, exactly. gosh. What were you doing again? <laughs> hey, Robert, that'll, you can, where you put the bag at, you can shift weight in the car like that, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, gosh, Raj. Only Hold you. it. Now, you got to understand in racing, weight is... I know is, this. But, king in the car. But, you, you can put it where it's got to go. I don't know, but <laughs> you just, you, oh. Right. <laughs> I kind of love you. You're my uncle, you one, know. One so. of them over the edge things, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over the hedge? <laughs> no, edge. Not hedge, <laughs> Mom. Edge. Did you did you pick up one of your crew members already finally at the tr at the uh, airport? I'm, I'm still doing laps around the airport here. Okay. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> All right. That's good. But, they don't have a place for you to park for at least 10 or 15 minutes? Yeah, so I could keep talking if you wish, you know. Well, that's good, that's good. Sure. I've got lined up tonight, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, but it, you know, a lot of people always ask me how, how they keep in touch with, you know, you know, us and our organization. You know, we've got a website uh, at www.r3motorsports.org is our uh, team's website. People can go on there and keep in touch with, you know, with the team and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, check out, you know, the schedules, and I think there's a, a you know, online blog there or whatever people, you know, post on. Um, trying to get a forum worked up where, you know, fans can, you know, be more in contact, you know, with me and, you know, Scott Riggs and... Right, right. The other you know, drivers and, and people that are on our team. That's what, that's what I should do is get you to get Scott to call him one night. Yeah, I mean, Scott's a great guy, and he's definitely been a great help to our organization, you know, the past couple of years, and uh, has taught me a lot, and uh, has, you know, helped me, you know, progress a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this year, I really haven't had a chance to show much because of, you know, you know like I said earlier, you know, mechanical issues, and, 
mm-hmm. parts failures and blown motors. I mean, mm-hmm. but one of these, you know, races will, you know, hit the nail on the head and and be able to, you know, show everybody what we've got this year. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Now, are you going to are you going to be displacing him any at any of the races in the Cup car? Or is he got to, uh, going to run it the full time? Uh, we're we're working. I mean, Scott's you know been helping us out and and doing you know starting park efforts on the Cup side you know for the past you know you know, or most of this season, and uh, you know we're trying to get a deal put together where he can run both the Cup race and the nationwide race for us at Texas. Right. So, uh, right. You know. We're, you know, right uh, to reward him for, for helping us out. And, uh, you know, no race car driver wants to do a start and park effort mm-hmm. with any team. Mm-hmm. You know, but at the same time, uh, you know, it keeps them in the garage. And, you know, you know, and as the saying goes, if you're out of sight, you're out of mind. So, True. True. You know, there's a lot of guys that, you know, don't race much anymore. And, you know, a lot of teams completely forget about some of these guys. And, you know, they're so on their goals and everything that they've got going on through the year. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um, Jim hosted on our site. Hopefully he is just turning left at the airport. <laughs> Actually, I'm turning it right right now. It's a little difficult. <laughs> got to get back and practice for a road course racing. <clears throat> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Now, after the race at Bristol, are you, are you going to head back to Charlotte and then back down to Texas, or what are you going to go do? No, uh, I'll be uh, here on the East Coast for you know at least three weeks. I'll be out here working at the shop. So uh, anybody that wants to come down and check out our shop, our shop is in Santa Grove, North Carolina, and uh, mm-hmm. we have you know it's open to the public and they can come in and, and hang out. And we actually had a young man uh, named Bryson uh, come in today and, and hang out with us here at the shop and got to show him around a little bit. And uh, him and his family you know came by and said hello and. You know, they visit this you know, when they can or when they're in the area. So uh, mm-hmm. I'd like to thank them for coming out and you know, keeping in touch with us over the past you know year or so that we've got to know them. And, um, you know, or if people just want to keep in touch with me personally, I've got a Facebook page, uh, you know, that some of you are, are friends of mine on there. <laughs> and, you know, you can right. message on a weekly basis. But, uh yeah, well, yeah. I mean, any, you know, mark, mark, not really marketing, but social networking is, uh, you know, big, you know, nowadays. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. People being able to interact with their fans, and um, that's the good thing about NASCAR. It's, it's more of a, you know, fan-friendly sport. Yeah, right. So the fans get to right. interact with the drivers mm-hmm. and the crew members and, and see the cars up close and personal and uh, get the, you know, sights, smells, and, you know, everything that goes along with NASCAR and uh, that's why I think you know fans love it so much Mm -hmm. but uh you know we just gotta try to get more fans in the stands I mean absolutely that is real true they're gonna tell on everybody and Mm -hmm. uh, not everybody wants to spend the money to go to uh, sporting events and uh, you know they're trying to save their money to provide for their families and uh, things like that but we definitely would like to have you at the next (laughs) All right, so. right. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll definitely be running into you at Richmond, one way, shape, or form, or the other. <laughs> oh, yeah. Some way. Well, I'll, I'll definitely get in touch with you and uh, see if we can't get you some credentials, you know, for, for the Richmond race. And, Good. Uh, awesome. Get everybody's information. But <clears throat> I'm actually uh, about to pick up one of my crew guys here at the airport. He's, you know, blowing my phone up as we speak. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. Hey, what are you doing next Wednesday? Uh, Next Wednesday? Yeah. I don't think I have any plans right now. Why? You could be in Hampton. Yeah, I could be. <laughs> yeah. Take a stop by, have you on the show live like Terry is. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It's a lot of fun. I'll even buy a good dinner. <clears throat> yeah, he has an awesome dinner. Yeah, Mexican food for everybody, baby. Oh, yeah. Over in Iowa. Robert, I know you got to go get him hooked up there. So we'll let you go so you can stop exploding your phone. But thank a couple of your sponsors before you go. All right. Well, I appreciate y'all having me on the show. Thank you. You're welcome. We love having you on the show. Have a great evening. You betcha. You're going to forget your sponsors already? I said sponsors. I guess you didn't hear me. Huh? What sponsors? (laughs) No. Well, at least you got to do North Texas Pipe anyway. Really? Right. 
And mom and dad, they're the biggest yeah. sponsors. <laughs> His dad. Yeah, you know, uh, in North Texas Pipe been on board with us, you know, for the past couple of years and uh, you know, Tia Rosa and, and Bimbo Baker, he's uh, come on board, you know, for a limited number of bases this year, so without their support, uh, I wouldn't be where I am today and uh, you know, guys like y'all that, you know, keep all of us, you know, drivers on these radio stations and talking to uh, you know, fans and keeping everybody informed of what's going on in our world to right. uh, you know, fill fill in the blanks or you know, answer any kind of questions that you know fans may have. Yeah. That's what we're here for. So but I don't know why in the hell you'd want to talk to a race car driver. <laughs> 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 we've had some strange stuff, I tell you. Oh, uh, we've had all things in between. And we actually have one, we had one time the lady that makes all y'all's uh, window belt, uh, window um, netting. Do what now, Roger? You know the uh, safety ma- mesh on your uh, left side when you're racing? Yeah. We actually had her, the lady that makes all those for you guys. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah? Yeah, that was interesting, though. Anyway, go have fun, enjoy your night, and we'll talk to you a little bit later. All right, guys. Y'all have a good week. See you, Robert. All right. See ya. See ya. How do you hang up this thing? You have to teach me how to do these things. Push the speaker button. Okay. I'm going to put that down. Push speaker button. Okay. Got that. Absolutely. Cool beans. All right. So that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Enjoyed that. I'm trying to see what his schedule is after Bristol. I know. Hopefully he... That'd be cool to have him on the show as well. Goes to Atlanta, then Richmond. Well... Maybe we can try to snag him on the cool. way to Richmond or something. And well, yeah, that we've we've talked about that before. Yeah. Usually, it's been whether he's in town or not for the right before Richmond. We should get your friend Charles on the show. The Richard oh, Petty lookalike. We've had him. I want to have him on the show though. I want to see this guy. Yeah, you should. Do uh, that Robert Robert made sure to tell me <clears throat> to get with Charles so he can get credentials for Charles so he will be in the mm-hmm. trailer. Awesome. At Richmond. That'll be cool. I'm excited for that. All right. It'll be fun. Lots of fun. Yeah. All right. So thank you for watching the show. We're sorry for well, the. Well, we still got fifteen minutes. Really? Yeah. No, you got three minutes. You got three minutes. No, we have fifteen. You lost, yeah, lost the first fifteen. Oh well. We have to we redo that part with Terry. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, see, you're gonna make her leave no, no, no. now. Yeah. Um, let's just get. Let's ask you the one thing that. Well, or you enjoyed. can redo your sign thing, the banner. Yeah, you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Let's oh, yeah. talk about this banner since you guys weren't able to see this um this banner has the let's talk racing logo on it and we got about 75 percent of the drivers at the knoxville sprint car yeah. race and the nationals to sign it we had the rookie of the year kyle larson we had johnny shots johnson brown all kinds of drivers signed it including terry and o'connell sh- shots won the race yeah. shots won the race Kevin so, Swindell signed Kevin it. Kevin Swindell. Mm-hmm. Terry signed it. I've signed it. Roger has. We had we, the director of the Hall of Fame at the Sprint Car Hall of Fame sign it. And uh, we also had uh, Emily, um, Steve King's sister, sign it. And she started the Steve King Foundation, mm-hmm. which helps drivers who are need some help with medical needs and things like that. Because he wrecked and died, uh, sadly, on turn three. So she did this foundation in honor of her brother. And mm-hmm. it's going to a great cause. And we're going to auction it off on eBay. Of course, it'll go to the highest bidder. Ha, ha, ha. And, well, I wouldn't and, think it goes to the lowest bidder. I know. Well, just in case. That's and government letting everybody work. That's know. government work. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll be able to raise a lot of money for this great cause and be able to help her out. All right. Which Absolutely. All the drivers are real excited. When I was <laughs> getting around to go sign it. They all were happy. Jim said it. you must be ready to go home. Yeah. I must be ready. I'm ready to go out and eat. I'm hungry, Raj. Oh, okay. <laughs> this time, all right. So this time, yeah, I'm going to right. dinner this time. So. We got Terry. We got, we got yeah, we can socialize. Yeah. Right. Catch up. Things like that. Um, well, sorry for the glitch we had earlier on the show, like I was saying, and thank you guys for watching. If you're new, please keep tuning in, and all you fans, keep watching for more All Things Racing. Bye. For what? All Things Racing. No, all for things. Let's Talk Racing. Let's you... Talk Racing. Oh, keep tuning in for All Things Racing. We talk about all no, kinds of things racing. there's another show called All Things Racing. Really? Oh, we're not it. I didn't know that. Ah, well, keep like... tuning in for Let's, let's talk, talk Racing. racing. <laughs> so- <laughs> Hi, my name is Natalie Sather. I drive the 94 K and N Lady Eagle Safety Wear Butler Built Seats Bell Helmets Hooker Harness Seat Belts Number 94 at South Boston Speedway. Be sure to listen to Let's Talk Racing TV.
I'm Sam Hunt, driving a 42 car, all the thing, Let's Talk Racing. Hey guys, I'm Daytona 500 winner Trevor Bain, and thank you for watching Let's Talk Racing. Hi, I'm Robert Richardson Jr., driver of the number 23 Dodge Challenger for R3 Motorsports in the NASCAR Nationwide Series, and you're watching Let's Talk Racing. I'm Teddy Peter, driver of the number 17 Toyota in the NASCAR Camp World Truck Series, and you're listening to Let's Talk Racing. Let's Talk Racing is brought to you by PC Doctors, Computer Sales and Services. This doctor still makes house calls. And also Hampton Incredible Tees and Signs, both located at 1248 North King Street in Hampton, Virginia.